The video game industry is finding itself in a very interesting predicament thus far in 2024. And there's been lots of debates online about whether or not gaming has gotten stale or it's boring or it's stagnant with 2024 essentially being in full swing. And this is a topic and a discussion that I don't really feel like there's a right or wrong answer too because i feel like it's a very nuanced discussion i just want to talk about the things that i see within the video game industry and why some people are perceiving it to be in a bit of a rut right now and what we could kind of do to circumvent those sort of feelings when it comes to the industry this could end up being a very long video i have a lot of things to say about various aspects of the video game industry so go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're here so that you know i know you actually cared about this video but let's talk about this spawn wave might talk about this today as well but he sucks he sucks so first off when you're looking at the video game industry what is it kind of contingent on you know the one thing that we all sort of hang on with this are you know new games and new hardware you know it's always exciting when new games are announced or revealed it's always exciting when new hardware is announced and revealed and thus far in 2024 it's been pretty soft in that sort of aspect when you look at the big three companies themselves and what they're doing and what they have planned for 2024 you know there are some question marks with it let's start off with sony sony and the playstation 5 is doing very well right now in console sales but when you look at first party exclusives for the system i mean it's been a little bit dry Let, let's be realistic a lot of third party companies are picking up sony slack and when sony themselves comes out and says hey there's really not going to be like any big first party games in the calendar year of 2024 it's kind of like well, what are you doing here you know that that's kind of a weird thing to say especially considering this isn't a brand new system where you have to learn system architecture you know this system has been out for quite a while now you would think there would be a steady flow of games that were in development or in the pipeline for the PlayStation 5 coming to us from Sony's studios but it really hasn't been that way and especially in 2024 what are you looking forward to that's a first party game in 2024 concord with the roast beef sandwich like what is that game we don't even know yet allegedly this is supposed to be a 2024 game so sony fans are getting kind of restless i mean look at the facts right now sea of thieves and grounded are some of the most popular games on the playstation 5 games from the xbox but i'm not giving xbox a pass necessarily either because while yes there are some games that are scheduled for 2024 such as hellblade 2 avowed and my personal favorite of the three indiana jones which I don't care man i am so excited for this game i think this game is going to be awesome there is still that aura and that mystery around xbox because like what is xbox actually focused on right now is it games is it hardware is it game pass subscriptions is it getting people to play on xbox platforms or is it getting people to play their games on platforms no matter which platform it is are we competing are we complacent and that's something that we'll talk about in a little bit as far as that aspect is concerned but xbox just seems to kind of be lacking an identity right now you know what playstation's identity is you know what nintendo's identity is but what is xbox's identity i feel like it shifts every other month whenever a ceo or phil spencer comes out there and says one thing and then it ends up being something else it feels like there is a lack of direction and really a lack of focus with xbox and even with 2024 finally having some xbox games you do have that mindset of well are these games actually going to come out like hellblade we know is going to come out but what about avowed what about indiana jones i mean indiana jones was said to be a 2024 game with no sort of release window could that game end up slipping into 2025 it's not outside the realm of possibility when you look at xbox in the past with games like starfield forza 8 and of course redfall which probably shouldn't have come out when it did and then you have nintendo nintendo in its transition phase except 
we don't know what they're transitioning to now yes nintendo has been releasing games thus far in 2024 and we do know about some more games coming up but let's be realistic i don't necessarily think these are big triple a banger games these feel like transitional phase games smaller games like princess peach's showtime of course remakes and remasters with paper mario the thousand year door luigi's mansion 2 hd and reviving a franchise that I thought I was the only person that liked with a game like Endless Ocean. But you definitely feel like Nintendo has more to say or has more to showcase. However, we don't know anything about this new hardware. And when you look at the Nintendo Switch's hardware, I feel like general interest in it has gone down substantially across the board. It used to be exciting when a game would come to the Switch because you wanted to see how it would perform. There wasn't really anything else like it. But with the rise of handheld mini PCs being abundant in the gaming sphere, like there's a lot of different choices out there. There's a lot of different options out there. And what was hot in 2017 and 2018 has definitely cooled off in 2024. But the biggest thing is there is this aura of mystery surrounding Nintendo and everything we've been told from insiders and journalists and stuff like that, which we'll get into in a second is of course saying that the next nintendo hardware isn't coming out until 2025 it's like well what are they gonna do the rest of the year will it be more remakes remasters you know just kind of biding their time and i think when you look at all three of the major companies that's where this this sort of debate starts to come from you know it, there, there's a lot of stagnation right now within the video game industry but why is that you know why is that the case and i think that there are two main factors right now with the video game industry that i don't necessarily see like clearing up anytime soon if anything i think things are going to get worse before they get better first and foremost we have the development costs of these video games look at something like the playstation 2 era where it was literally every month there were several high quality triple a games coming out for the playstation 2 that system was an absolute monster you can even look at the xbox 360 and playstation 3 era where game development costs weren't nearly as high as they are now so you were getting a steady outpouring of games and it wasn't necessarily just big AAA games. It was weird games. It was quirky games, sometimes from big AAA studios. Companies were willing to take a sizable risk because at the end of the day, the risk wasn't really all that big. If the development costs of a game aren't all that much, you could kind of get a little bit crazy, get a little bit kooky, spooky, like the Adams Family. But with the modern age of video games, like everything is a big budget production now. Everything is a major thing where it's like you have one small misstep like that could sink your company. And that's an absolutely crazy thing to think about. So that's why you get so many remakes. That's why you get so many remasters, because it's not as hard to do something like that. If the groundwork is already there, you're just enhancing the textures, making a new control scheme like there's a low risk, high reward situation with that. But if it's anything like a medium risk to a high reward, companies just seem to shy away from that. They're not necessarily interested in taking that risk when there's a game from their catalog that they could potentially make HDified and put it out on modern platforms. And people will get that nostalgia bug and be like, oh, I have to have this again for some reason. It really limits creativity within the video game industry. So it becomes a heck of a lot more cookie cutter. But I think the other thing is the fact that, you know, it's 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 something that just needs to be said, I feel, with this. But the lack of competition, the lack of competition creates stagnation within the video game industry. When your big three hardware manufacturers all have, you know, different ideas about what you're doing, it makes things feel a bit boring. Look at something like the 90s or the mid 90s or something. You had so many consoles coming out from all of these companies. They were all taking shots at each other. It was all trying to be the best looking games, the best playing games, the best first party library. You had the Atari Jaguar, the 3DO, the, the um, Sega CD, the Sega Genesis, the Super Nintendo. You had the Sega Saturn, the Sony PlayStation. All of these things came around at the same time time 
and you had the Sega 32X too, one of the best systems ever. Go read my book about it. But you had all these companies trying to push gaming, trying to figure out, you know, what's the next big thing? And you do not have that anymore with these companies. Sony and Xbox are in two different plateaus right now. Xbox doesn't want to compete. Sony does their own little thing. Nintendo's in their own little world as well. And when you don't have competition and everything is just sort of focused on what you have been doing instead of what you plan to do in the future, it really just leads to a lot of negative feelings, I feel. You know, competition is good. Competition creates greater things. When there's no competition in any sort of sphere, it leads to stagnation. We've seen it time and time again, whether it's, you know, pro wrestling or sports or something like that. When you remain stagnant, you're not pushing for greatness. You're not pushing the medium in a positive direction. Now, of course, we do have indie companies as well that are, you know, flourishing right now. But I even feel like indie companies are kind of getting into these ruts. Like how many 2D pixel roguelikes are you gonna make? How many cozy farming games are you going to make? It seems like even indie games have kind of stagnated where they're all trying to get like that next game that just blows up for whatever reason. Maybe a, a big popular streamer plays it or it just gravitates towards an audience. I just feel like the amount of triple a well not even necessarily triple a i shouldn't say that because triple a is kind of thought to be a budget thing but just the unique experience the marquee that's the word i'm looking for the marquee you know indie title that creates a franchise that creates you know something bigger than just you know a, another indie game i feel like even those are starting to diminish a little bit because we're starting to reach an era of complacency where you just look at one game and then you look at another game and you're like, well, maybe I'll combine those two together. Now, as far as PC gaming is concerned, I'm not a personal computer gamer, so I don't know how everyone's living over there. I'm sure it's, you know, the same sort of thing. But one other thing that I feel like has been a detriment to video games, and this is gonna be sounding very ironic coming from me, but I feel like the veil being lifted on the industry has definitely been a little bit of a detriment now. You know, video game information was very controlled, you know, up until like two decades ago. It was all, you know, you had to be someone. You had to have, you know, an in, in, in with these companies. You had to go to these events with these companies. It was all a very controlled thing. But with the rise of social media, you've created different personalities out there and people that are able to do their own sort of thing, which I think is a great thing. But on the opposite side of it, you also start to see the underbelly of the video game industry, how it works, how people involved in the video game industry view their clientele, what sort of things that they focus on within these games that might not really make sense to a vast majority of people because they're just looking for good graphics and good gameplay. They don't care about other things involved in it. And I think there's always been a place for video games with a purpose. And by a purpose, I mean something to, to make you think outside of the box, something to make you think Think that video games are a bigger medium than just an entertainment thing like I, I always think back to Metal Gear Solid 2 because that game completely opened my eyes to the political spectrum and how things are done and how things are handled and it's crazy how much of the things that were talked about in that video game ended up becoming true but sometimes I feel like social issues just get shoehorned into video games and a lot of people play video games for an escape. They're not necessarily looking to change the world within a video game. They're just looking to escape from the real world that they have to live in 24 seven. And when a lot of these things get shoehorned in there or they don't feel natural and it seems like every game has some sort of controversy surrounding it because of some outside entity or some employee of a company just being completely off the rails on social media, it paints the video game industry kind of as a lot more humanizing. And then you realize that humans are very complex and you're not always going to agree with them. And when you don't agree with people on certain things, there'll be contingencies of people that will just attack you and treat you like you're, you're a second class video game citizen. And it's like, bro, I, I'm just a fan 
of video games. I'm just like you. It's just our tastes are different. And that's what this all really boils down to is personal preference. Like, yeah, you can go into your back catalog of stuff if you happen to miss something to kind of, you know, pass the time. Or you could be like me. I've kind of gone back to the PS2 era. I've been playing a ton of PS2 stuff via emulators upscaled with HD texture packs and stuff. And some of these games I either haven't played in a very long time or I haven't really played much at all. I've actually been really getting into Gran Turismo 3 A spec because I didn't have a PS2 when that game came out and I immediately went to Gran Turismo 4. But I'm finding a lot of joy playing Gran Turismo 3 A spec and just figuring out mechanics of the game and figuring out what to necessarily do, how to progress with it. And of course there is that rubber band AI. But I think that's a good kind of topic to end on is progression in video games because i feel like that's one of the things right now that a lot of video games are kind of lacking in you know it seems like games just kind of come and go you know they're here one week and then they're gone the next because for whatever reason they don't linger quite as long there isn't that sort of progression that you constantly have to do it again and you constantly have to get a little bit better some games hold their value better than others for sure and it all kind of depends on the game itself but I just feel like it's almost like this ADD culture that we're in where everyone has a short attention span. And that's why TikTok is so popular because they just experience something and they, they want to experience it as fast as humanly possible. And once they get to a certain point with the game, whether it's completing the game or just getting to a satisfactory point, they tend to move on. I feel like that's a problem with society, but that's also a problem with the games themselves because why aren't these games as captivating anymore? Why aren't these games supporting such high replay value like a lot of games did or, you know, good progression that we saw back in the older days where it just seems like it's just a mad dash to beat the game and then you move on to the next thing. Is it societal? Is it because of game developers? I mean, I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer. There's not a right or wrong answer for this entire video because at the end of the day, this is just how I view things. But I feel like, how I view things is the truth, at least to me. Let me know in the comment section down below, though. What do you think is going on with the gaming industry right now? Do you think it's fine? Are you happy with it? And if you are, that's not a bad thing. Like, there's there's nothing wrong with that. That's your personal opinion. Do you think it's in a rut? If so, what do you think is the contributing factors to it? And was I completely right in everything I said in this video? I mean, maybe. <laughs> and as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like, comment, share, hit the bell as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.